next guest needs no introduction. He is a Pittsburgh legend, a treasure. And he now has a new podcast that focuses on what makes Pittsburgh so unique. And we are so happy to have WQED's Rick C back with us today. I'm so happy to be here. This is so, last time we were together, we were on stage for <laughs> Off the Record. It's been a couple of months. It's so good to see you again. You were dressed as a witch. I got to introduce you saying <laughs> terrible things about you. <laughs> but it was so much fun. So oh, we're, I'm being told that your microphone is not turned on. Uh, I don't right, want this thing. turned off before. Uh, Look at this. He knows what he's doing, so it's fine. And this is live TV. And uh, you want me to there do we it? go. How's we that? should be good now. Can you hear Better? me? I didn't want to waste the segment without being able to hear you. I think we're good. So let's talk about your new podcast. It's, it's called Gum Bands. Gum Bands. Which we have right here. Well, these are gum band balls. Uh, gum band balls, right. How did you come up with the idea? Um, actually, it wasn't my idea. I've been working with uh, a co-producer, Rich Capaldi, and... Uh, he, uh, he said to me one day, you know, WQED doesn't have a podcast. If you'll do it with me, we'll, we'll make this work. And uh, it's been totally fun. Um, we've it putzed and experimented, and we're still doing that. And I think and that's part of the, the, ju the joy of it, you know. And you're looking for unique Pittsburgh things. Actually, it's really been more people than things. Really? Yes. Um, I mean, we did do one. We, we tried doing them out in the field. We went and did uh, Steel City Salt Company in Millvale. Huh. Um, and, you know, there are great spices over there, John Torello and his wife, Candy. Um, we also did one in the WQED-FM studio, uh, you know, radio studio with Bill uh, Tippins, who's written two books for young readers. But then we decided, hey, how about our great cafeteria QED? And that's where we've been shooting them because it has beautiful natural light coming in. Is that where I saw the one with the brothmonger? The brothmonger oh, is in the cafeteria. Her. Yes, yes. I saw that she did a segment with you guys she did. in the morning. And she is really wonderful. She makes great soups. And that's just the kind of thing I want to celebrate. People that are doing interesting things. And uh, although she has stopped being a funeral director, she had that double life. The brothmonger did, yes. The brothmonger used to be a, f uh, a uh, funeral director in the South Hills, but she's decided to go full time on soup now. So, and she's selling it in Bloomfield out of the little place called Time Machine. So. She's really cool. And you can look her up on Instagram, too. It's, it's worth giving her a follow and trying her soup. Trust me. How does it feel to be doing a podcast now? You've done a little bit of everything. Well, it's really funny. Um, I, an old associate producer of mine, Matt Conrad, who now lives in Maryland, said something to me about, he said, I used to have to put your interviews that you did for your documentaries into the computer, and you always wanted me to take your questions out. He said, so I, I used to listen to this all the time. It's just like an interview I would do for a documentary, but uncut. It's just uncut. And, and I like that. I like the fact that we can do some depth and talk about, you know, why people live in Pittsburgh and that kind of thing. And I think we have a snippet of one of your podcasts, think, yes, right? With the, with the broth monger. Oh, is it? Oh, perfect. Okay, so let's take a listen to this. I haven't lived in any other cities, but I don't really think that Brothmonger would have been able to be as successful anywhere else. Just because I have such a support system here um, already, and then everyone, everyone in the city is just so, so nice and welcoming and supportive. Um, but yeah, I feel it's just, I can't really say like it's not like any other place because I don't really know what any other place is like. But uh, yeah, it's just wonderful. I love, I love Pittsburgh a lot. And still do. Yes. Okay. And. Sometimes I, mean, I hate it, but, you know, it's just like, that's a natural feeling of knowing something. Right, that's the way life is. Yeah. We all kind of hate it in February. No, it's not so much. I just think, like, yeah, sometimes you, things you love, you hate. Sometimes, and that's yeah, the way and that's is. okay. Yes. You still love them more than you hate them. Exactly. I think. Yes. So, wh what are you finding? Because I, I never see you without a smile on. Or do you find that you've been doing this for a while, talking to people, learning things about our city? Do you still find that you're learning things? Oh, all the time. That's why I say that that is the best thing that I find about Pittsburgh is that it's constantly surprising. Um, I did an interview with Mark Hauser, the guy that does tours of the tops of buildings, and talking to him, I learned things. And you know, uh, it's even just this past weekend, I, I I went and I did a thing with the Washington uh, Symphony in Washington, PA. I didn't know they existed. Yeah. Um, there is constant surprises in Western Pennsylvania all over. I did uh, the open streets on Sunday and, you know, walking through the Armstrong tunnels, a guy on a bicycle said, hey, I love the podcast. Oh, that's I, great. I, you know, yeah, it's, it, you know, Pittsburgh is full of constant surprises and that's what keeps me going, I think. Uh, well, and I, I do think that if you 
metaphorically so, stop to smell the roses. You stop to look at all of these really interesting things that are happening around us. It will make you happy. It'll, it will make you see our city in a different way. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I've, I've always, uh, I, I wasn't a Pittsburgh. I had moved away for 16 years. I wasn't looking to get back. But once I came back, I realized there are so many wonderful things about this yeah. Pittsburgh area that it's just amazing. And, yeah, you know, that's what I'm still celebrating with this new podcast. Did you, how did the name come to you? Uh, immediately. I don't know why. I just said, if we're going to do a podcast, we'll call it Gum Bands, Holding Pittsburgh Together. <laughs> and, you know. You did not make these, though. No, you can get these, like, you know, at uh, stores that sell stationery and things like that. Uh, and, you know, they're really fun. And as Ray Petlin showed us, they're great for juggling. Too. Great for juggling. I, we didn't have a behind the scenes clip. We'll try and get that to you. But he did, in <laughs> fact, juggle with these. I just want to know, maybe this is for your next podcast. How do you get one of these started? I have no idea, but yeah. you know what? There's somebody that I want to have on the podcast. I know uh, Sebastian Lobo Guerrero, and he told me that his son has a big one. So I'm hoping that not only can I get Sebastian, who's an engineer who's worked on a lot of projects around Pittsburgh, but that he would bring his son's huge gum band gumball. Ball. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to the next episodes. Where can people catch them? Um, well, there are wqed.org/gumbands or anywhere you get your podcast. So. A uh, friend surprised me la uh, the first week, and it was, they were up on Apple Podcasts before they were on QED. It's so, amazing. Yeah, it's just really fun. Very cool. It's a Thank whole you new so thing. much, Rick. Although Always podcast is just another word for talk show. Right. That's all it is, <laughs> just another version of it.